born an athlete, you'll die an athlete. It's in your DNA. Live like an athlete so that you can be successful. You are an athlete. Live like it. A and A. America needs athletes. We are live. Well, not really anymore, but um, welcome athletes into the gym closet. Um, if this is your first time joining us, we are a pod, Crave Gym podcast talking about everything that is Crave Gym. We also talk about uh, how to live your life like an act, athlete, how to be great, and how to be successful in life. So um, please, if this is your first time listening to us, subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way we can get some cool uh, live content on YouTube because we still have to get some more followers. So if you want to push that, please jump on there and tell all your friends as well. Um, I'm here, as usual, with Zach Vaness. What's up? Hello. How's it going? Good. And then uh, new to the gym closet today and new to our coaching staff, we have Austin Best today. How's it going, Austin? Good, happy to be here. Hell yeah, man. We, uh, we're going to get into a little bit of uh, introduction with Austin and, and talk to him and interview him a little bit. Um, but first, we want to talk a little bit about what we got going on in the gym. So if, you're, um, if you are joining us before you train tonight, you're going to be hitting the challenge. Um, Yesterday was like the burpee day that everybody. Yeah, tried yesterday to like everyone. Yesterday everyone like the second they walked in, they were like already. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, they were all pissed off. Exactly. Yesterday, but. And uh, and so with that, we had a lot of people try to avoid yesterday by coming <laughs> today, and then they get the challenge. It's a bad, day. Yeah, so that was a bad choice. That's a bad <laughs> choice. Yeah. So I don't know which one's worse. Um, we had, for example, I, did we kind of review? Did we review? No, we had the challenge. We had the before. challenge last Monday. Yeah. Monday, okay, yep. yeah. So we already reviewed it a little bit, but um, we have it again today, so we haven't had too many. We're recording this at like 10 a.m., so we've only had our 5 a.m. and our 6 a.m., so we haven't had too many results in yet, but we'll see how everybody compares to last week. Um, we do have, uh, let's see, uh, a program tip for um, that I wanted to go over. So one thing that I've been seeing here this season, so we're three weeks in, and, um, and one thing that's a little bit different with this endurance season is our, uh, our strength portion. And so instead of doing our five by whatever rep ranges, uh, sets that, that we normally do in a strength season or in, um, in any other one of the seasons, except our endurance season in endurance season, we're working on that muscle endurance. So we have those 20 second counts of, um, of whatever exercise we're doing. And so we've, we've had a lot of questions on how to uh, record that in your lifting cards, how to keep track of that weight, and then how to progress and continuously overload because we're doing so many reps and we're doing uh, lighter weight this, this season. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. We have our, um, our lifting cards that have each of our training sessions on them. With those, you have basically two slots. Normally we have you know, okay, you did five rep or you did five uh, sets that's recognized on there, but it shows what weight you did and, and what adjustments you made and, and how many reps you could actually get. Now we basically have two columns. So we basically have what weight you're hitting and then your total reps. So what we want to do with that is we want to accumulate the first six sets. So as most of you know, if you've trained here in the last three weeks, you know, we have 20 seconds on 20 seconds off, even over in the strength area. And so with that, we're hitting our, um, we're hitting our certain weight. That's going to be relatively light, especially to start. And then we rest 20 seconds, hitting, hit it for 20 seconds, rest 20 seconds. And so I want to really reiterate smooth movement, reiterate good form. Uh, if you're not able to end that 20 seconds with the same form that you began that 20 seconds with, you need to go down in weight. We're not working on uh, power. We're not working on overall strength this season. We're working on muscle endurance. And so get a weight that you can maintain that movement with, with perfect form and staying smooth. We don't want to be jerky within that movement, even though we're going for a, a max number of reps. A lot of people, um, that I talked to were like, well, how can I go as fast as I can without risk of injury? And I said, well, we're not, we're not going as fast as we can 
we're going perfect reps. How many reps can you get perfect? So if you're going fast as you can and you fuck up a rep, that rep, it, it, does not, it doesn't count in, in what we're trying to do. Only perfect reps count. Um, and then what we want you to do is tally those reps for the entire six sets. So if I get five reps, the first set, take a 20 second rest. The second set, I get another five, that's 10 total. And I just keep adding on to that total for those six sets. That's gonna be the reps that I put in there. That way, when I come back to that training session two weeks from now, I can say, okay, I wanna hit that rep range again and I wanna do it with a heavier weight with perfect form, or I want to do the same weight and I want to hit it for more reps with perfect form. So I don't know what, what have you seen over at Waukee is, is, um, have people been doing a pretty well, good we job. Had, we've had no that. problems in Waukee. So, we've had no issues right? at that's all good. in Waukee. Waukee's been perfect, honestly. Uh, that's, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Maybe one day you guys will win a championship. Maybe. <laughs> so yeah, if you're training so well, I want to see you guys represent and win a championship. Maybe. Well, if we have people show up next time, we'll have a chance. Right? Waukee men. Yeah, exactly. Just just a, a subtle <laughs> shout out to everybody. Um, but yeah, so um, make sure that we're doing perfect form. Make sure that we have the, the weight that we need on there in order to be successful. Get as many reps as you can, but you have to do as many reps as you can do perfectly. That's, that's the thing that, um, that I want to really reiterate. Uh, so we're not jerking around. We're not trying to just do... Uh, reps as fast as possible if especially you know if we're doing uh, an rdl we're not just you know whipping up and down as fast as we can you have to keep that perfect rdl form um, and you're going to be doing as many reps as you can smoothly with that form so um, just kind of a psa program trip tip um, for the middle of our season uh, but let's see what else do we got we got athlete of the athlete of the week oh yes a o t w it used to be yes. o, o a O T M. But now it's athlete. weekly. No, now it's weekly. Not monthly anymore. I love it's weekly. It. I love it. He's got so many athletes now. That's exactly. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So who do we got for our uh athlete of the week? Yes, athlete of the week. We've got Tony Biondi. I think that's how you say your last name, Tony, sorry. Um, uh, over in Waukee. I'm in charge of athlete of the week, so it's gonna be all Waukee people. Probably. I was gonna say no, we, we might only have Waukee athletes. No, we really have to step it up over here. Anyone that anyone more. that has seen on Facebook and Instagram, also I've had a couple comments from a couple people that I like sent the emails to, and they're like, "Have we been doing this?" I'm like, "Yeah, we've been doing this for like three months now." So do you yeah, not so pay follow attention. us on Facebook or Instagram? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so, listen to the gym closet. Oh, boys, listen to the gym closet. Yeah, this is our first time we're actually talking about it on the podcast. That's though, true. So That's <laughs> it's true. just been posted before, but right. we're stepping it up a notch. But yeah, so Tony is our athlete of the week over there in Waukee. Um, basically, Tony deserves this. This is about to get deep and emotional. No, Tony deserves this because he shows up every day, except for yesterday. I don't know where he was at. But other than that, he shows up every day. Fantastic attitude. So much fun to work with. Um, he just, and anyone would tell you in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday noon sessions over there, he, he gets it going. He's the one that's there and... I mean, that is such a fun session to coach every week or a couple times a week because it's so energetic. And part of that is because it's not five in the morning and it's not the end of the day after everyone's done with work and it's at noon. So right. timing wise, it makes it a little bit easier too. But Tony really, you know, brings a lot of energy, has a lot of fun with it. Um, and he's one of those guys that he's not just there to show up and get through an hour workout and leave. You know, he, you know, wants to make it fun. And not only make it fun for himself, but make it fun for everyone else, all the other athletes, and for me as a coach too. So and he's competitive we had a good time. Too. And he's I very competitive yeah. so, too. Yeah. So I've I've randomly I I guess probably because he's consistent. Yeah. So I coach over there very inconsistently, and so a lot of times I don't see uh, a lot of the same athletes. But it seems like I always see Tony because he's probably consistent. So if I'm over there coaching, I get to see him. But it it's one of those things where he pushes himself to to the next level and then being able to do that then the competitive nature comes out with everybody and, and oh, pushes yeah. his teammates for as sure well. so it's a, a huge um it's a huge honor to be training with him and being able to coach him is, is a lot of fun so yeah, yeah one of those things one of those people that make the sessions uh really push uh the, the whole session gets oh, yeah. pushed to a higher yeah. level. Which it's, is awesome. it's really his energy is really it's infectious for everybody and you can tell you know that when he's there you know everyone has a lot of injury. I just has a lot of fun with it too. And, and, and he's been coming to Cray for a long time now. He's yeah. Been, I was telling Austin, actually, my uh, Thursday is my two year anniversary here. 
and uh, Tony was here before I was. So Tony's been here for more than two years. Really? So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's crazy because it seems like you've been here for seems much like longer, longer than that than two years. You know, it really does. Yeah. But I think so. We we must have just hired for because you worked over here in preparation. Yeah, when I started, for, I kind of bounced back and forth a little bit. Yeah. What was it 2019 then? Yeah. It was, in yeah, May. May. Okay, May so we hired, yeah. so we were already open over there. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that yeah. that's what's funny is it seems like, it seems like we, ha- we, it seems like you've been coaching with us since we opened. Yeah. Just seven years ago. Yeah, right. But you were, oh, since we've opened over there, which right. is only two. So it's, it's crazy that just for, for us, and I'm speaking for Amber as well, it just seems like it's been forever. It does. In a good way. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Not like it's just been dragging it right. out. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, you've only been here for two years. <laughs> We've been having to deal with you for so long. No, it really, I was thinking about the other day, I was like, it seems like, <laughs> it seems like way longer than two years, but then it also, like, I can still remember my first day coming in, too. Like, it really, I remember Bob. How could I forget Bob, though? Bob Carlson, Carlson yeah. yeah that's Bob's awesome. giving me a hard time, so not that much has changed in two years, because Bob's still giving me a hard time, but. Right, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, yeah, happy uh, two-year anniversary. I know, yeah. Short, when did you say it was? Uh, May 20th. Coming 2019, because it was two days before my birthday, which is Saturday. Everyone remember two days on Saturday, so. My Venmo name is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wanting to put some. No one, no one responded to my. No one responded to my moving help request, so I'm thinking. I maybe, didn't like, see it. My Facebook's down though, so that's my excuse. No, you're good. Yeah. Well, Amber, Amber yeah, texted should've... me. Amber texted me on, on the say, day I was moving. Me. Oh, she texted me and she's like, "Hey, do you need help moving?" And she's like, "If so, just let Tyler know and he'll be there." Yeah, and I was like, well, and you didn't, have, and you didn't let me. Know. We really didn't need help, though. Oh, we were okay. good. Are you sure? All right. Yeah. I feel like because because I told her, I, I I don't think I told her, but she kind of told me, hey, I, I she volunteered. She volunteered. She told you, yeah. Yeah, and then I was she like, did. oh, that's fine. That's yeah. Good. All right, I'm I'll, I'll go do it, but but I never I didn't have to. And moving's the worst though. How how was it? Oh my god, it it's uh so Saturday was the day we turned our keys in at our apartment, and it is so nice just to be done with that. So now. It was so hard because the whole, so we moved in on not this Friday, but the last Friday before that. Yeah. Um, basically all last week, we didn't really do anything at the new house because we were so busy coming back and cleaning the apartment, taking loads back and stuff. So it was just like, we were so back and forth and we couldn't really get anything done at the house. So now we're finally to a point where like, we can actually start focusing on that. Not that we've really done a whole lot yet, but I've sure. put a lot of blinds in. Right. Put a lot of Google Nest shit on like i did oh, like sure. to ring yeah, the doorbell yeah. i was such a bitch to do yeah but some of them are super easy <laughs> my old house was super easy my new mm-hmm. house i had to like drill new holes and yeah. do a whole bunch of stuff. that's what i shit. Yeah, yeah i had to do all sorts of shit so yeah. i think yeah it just becomes uh it can be easy or difficult so, yeah um but yeah so did you guys take a little bit of time i know you guys wanted to try to get out and in in like a couple of days did you end up doing yeah that we ended up so we time? uh so the move on friday we my dad luckily has a trailer so he brought a trailer down and uh i mean we got like nine i'd say like 80 90 percent of our stuff over there and then after that it was just like finding like all this random stuff like that in the apartment like we had you know that you don't even think about like screens on the doors and you know things hanging on the walls right you know like cleaning stuff hidden away in like the cabinets and stuff like that so it was like every time we went there was like more stuff that we just kept load, finding. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. and like at first I thought I was like we'll probably have like maybe two loads and we ended up having like seven really I'm like so, so we went over like we went help. over like every single well we didn't need help <laughs> <laughs> no we really we're good yeah Awesome. Well, but I'm glad you guys now. got moved so, yeah. in and, and relaxing a little bit. Yes. On top of it, feels so bit. good to just it's have so a little nice bit more space. Be done now. Yeah. Now, like, now our fence is gonna come in. I'm gonna have to put a fence up, and it's just gonna be. There's that's no. one I might not volunteer no, for. I wouldn't. We did our fence. <laughs> what, what kind of fence are you doing? It's like what you guys have, like the white oh, privacy, yeah. the vinyl, white vinyl fence. That's yeah. A, so that's a nightmare. I, I don't know. I'm I hate super. Doing that. I'm super excited. <laughs> if but but you have new like lawn and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, so. Ours, ours was the worst because it took like 20 minutes to drill with an, oh God, with an, yeah, auger, an auger to go yeah. down, but it took 20 minutes per hole because it was so hard oh gosh, yeah. that, that you might not have that problem. No, we just, yeah, we got, it's all new and we got new sod and the sod's been a whole thing too because I got to go out there and water with my hose every night. Well, luckily it's been raining. <laughs> I want to drive by just when you're watering. I feel so stupid, just a yeah. Well, it's, it's you know they make sprinklers, right? Yeah, and I have a sprinkler, but it doesn't reach every like square inch. Like, so there's like a few spots that it won't 
Like I move it around, but I don't want to waste water by you know, <laughs> you know. So I move my sprinkler around, but then there's a few spots where I want water by hand. But so, I love yeah. it. I love it. So if you're in the neighborhood, drive by and yeah, and wave it. Anyone going out to Kinship can really is. like it's literally if you're going to Kinship, you would be taking a turn. It'd be 30 seconds out of your way. If anyone going out to Kinship, I know all my Milwaukee athletes are going out there. You guys can swing by and. Which help me water you, my side. If uh, if you are going out, make sure that you go to craveathlete.com. Yes. Um, get it's ten bucks. It's worth a drink and a donation to um, the Special Olympics. So it's to a good cause and gets you a drink. So um, so make sure you go craveathlete.com and and get your ticket for that. Uh, we have a lot of people that have said they're going. Not a lot of people have signed up yet. So yeah. Um, so, so make sure on. that you get that in. Uh, that is June twelfth at nine thirty a.m. So we got a little bit of time here. But if you forget about it, um, and you show up that day, I guess we'll we'll probably take your money at that day. But we can probably yeah. We'll probably I'd much rather have yeah. a count so that we know who's. We do. Here. We are supposed to give kinship account of people beforehand, so it would be helpful if you signed up beforehand. Right, yeah. So that's going to be an awesome event. Um, the other cool thing that we're doing with Special Olympics, our power partner this season, is they have a virtual summer games instead of their normal summer games, which typically we would be set up to kind of warm their athletes up in between every single event. So they, before an event, they would come to us. We would get them ready for their event, which is awesome. Unfortunately, without them doing a summer games in person, we are going to then uh, do some things. We, if if you've been at West Des Moines, I think a couple from Waukee um, have wished them good luck in a in a training session. So we're going to get those videos up. We're also going to do a torch uh, run with and get that on video for the athletes to see. Uh, they're doing kind of a video where they're passing the torch um, virtually and doing that kind of stuff. So we'll have all that stuff um, made here in the next two days, you'll be able to see some of those things. So I think that's it with our Special Olympics power partner, but let's get into kind of the main event. Austin, tell us a little bit about, uh, to put you on the spot here, but all tell right. us a little bit about yourself um, and kind of just to start kind of what you, where you grew up, what your, um, you know, growing up was like, and then kind of in that respect, what your athletic career was and, and kind of what got you into uh, coaching and kinesiology and that kind of stuff. Sure. Thank you very much for having me on today. Definitely. Uh, grew up in West Des Moines, so I was a Valley Tiger, uh, played football there in high school. Most recently graduated college up in Minnesota at Gustavus Adolphus College, um, small liberal arts school, played Division three football there. I was actually a captain there, so I'm awesome. very proud of my career, I suppose. Yeah. Um, this past spring, I actually had the opportunity to intern at the University of Iowa with their strength and conditioning department for the football program, which is a great opportunity. You know, something I learned there that I hope I can bring here is whether you're a Division One athlete, you know, looking to play in the NFL, um, or if you're just training for general health and fitness, you know, um, I, you are an athlete and I'm going to coach you like an athlete. So that's something I'm definitely going to bring to Crave. Awesome. Yeah, I love that um, because obviously that's that's what we want. That That's our entire message and our entire mission statement is that everyone needs to live like an athlete. And just to re reiterate what our mission statement is and why we do what we do, um, it, you guys have all been in, in a locker room where you have all races, all religions, all, all people from all different places and regions. And in order to win a championship, in order to win games, you have to get along. You have to all reach for, for the same goals and 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 be a team and so that's that's what we want to make sure that that's kind of what living like an athlete means um and the greatness of doing that both inside of the gym and outside of the gym is um being able to live a successful life and and be successful in those principles and so that's one of the biggest things so here you know just like you said everybody needs to train like an athlete and that's that's a big part about the in the gym but you know and our mission statement includes that but then also you know, living like an athlete outside of the gym as well. Tell us a little bit more about um, kind of your experience at, at Iowa and what that looked like as far as the, the athletes that you got to work with and, and some of that uh, strength conditioning. Sure, yeah. Um, the pool of athletes was pretty wide range. I got to work with each athlete um, sort of individually on the team, but also they had NFL players returning. So a guy like Tristan Wirfs, who was a first round pick, 
just two years ago, um, just won a Super Bowl championship. I was able to train yeah. him, you know, several, That's awesome. yeah, several other NFL guys. So it was really <laughs> cool getting to work with um, kind of different populations, you know, whether you're a, a role player on a Division One team or a Super Bowl champion, you know, it's it really cool. Um, outside of that, I also got to work with some some pretty unique and cool equipment. Um, got to work with some Tendos, which measures oh yeah peak velocity, bar speed, that sort of thing, which was really interesting. Um, you know, they, they kind of have everything you could ever want in Iowa, so it was a really right. cool opportunity. That's awesome. Yeah, we're actually starting to uh, set up, and this is kind of a sneak peek for anybody, but if you've noticed, we have one rack out there that's kind of set up as a smart rack. So we have um, similar to, we basically have a bar sensor that goes up to that iPad and you can you can see the bar path, you can see the uh, the power, you can see all that kind of stuff and, and be able to calculate those things. So we're working on some really cool stuff to, to be able to duplicate some of what the tenant. Now that's a, a expensive uh, machine. Ours is a little bit different than that, but um, but those are always fun to, to work with. What did you what did you see as far as some of the the tech technological side of of strength and conditioning that a lot of uh, a lot of including us are kind of going in that direction as far as tracking um, you know velocity and power and all those type, type of things what was your experience in that and it, was that something you said that was pretty new to you sure yeah it was very new to me um, I think the thing that I helped with the most was just the individualization of the athlete you know some athletes are going to be really good at Olympic lifting some aren't so if you can throw them on a tendo unit with a trap bar jump and you're seeing that they're able to generate just as much force into the ground, you know, their peak power is just as good as someone who's hand cleaning, then that's that's going to be a great transition for them. Right. Nice. And just be able to, to program theirs in more individually and see how they're doing. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell us, so so how long were you at, at Iowa then for your internship? I was there from January until this past week. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's a long one, I feel like. Yeah, it was a... <laughs> It was a long internship. That That's average, awesome. Yeah. Average day was 4 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I definitely got some hours in there. I was going to say, you got the grind going. Yeah. That's the, the strength and conditioning life, right? That's right, yeah. What's what's some of the main takeaways that you, that you took from kind of um, being under their, uh, their coaching structure and all that kind of stuff, but then also um, some of the things that you might have added to your technically coaching or your philosophy as a coach? <laughs> Sure. I think, you know, anytime you're able to go somewhere like that, just programming wise, you learn a lot, you know, when to do certain things, when to push an athlete, when to maybe hold back a little bit more. Um, Cause I was also there for their spring ball phase. Sure. So I was kind of able to see, you know, maybe they tone it back a little bit for certain players, but then the guys that aren't getting as many reps, you know, they're going to ramp it up. They're going to be testing. They're going to be doing right. stuff like that. So that was really interesting. Um, other things I learned is just how to interact with players, you know, building relationships in this industry, especially just as with any other industry is very important. So definitely, it's definitely something that I was able to learn. Awesome. Yeah. The human aspect is one of the things that in strength and conditioning, a lot of times gets overlooked, I feel like, because uh, you, you hear most of the strength and conditioning co coaches and different things, talking X's and O's, talking programming, you know, um, but uh, one one coach, uh, Brett Bartholomew, that I, I, I love his stuff because he kind of takes it to the conscious coaches is his book, but it's basically the human element of working with athletes and, and working with people. So with that, you know, that translates to everybody. You know, if you're having a bad day, how do you get the most out of that person that, that came in and, and is not training, you know, or is not able to train at their 100% because something happened that day to them, whatever the case might be. But being able to, one, pull that out and find out that information is that human element of communication, but then also being able to you know, walk them through and get their 100% throughout, the, uh, throughout the training session is huge. So that, that's awesome to hear that, that that's one of the takeaways that, that you had had. Um, when, so being young, and, and this is one thing that is always interesting to me, how did you feel... Because the players are just mostly almost your age. You know, you're only a couple years older if you're graduating from college versus them being junior. And, and so, how did they take on you as an intern, and, and how were they perceive? How were they, how did they um, perceive your uh, your coaching and, and how you were able to interact with them? Sure, I think that's where it's important to when you do build that relationship. It's coach player, not friend friend you know and like right. you do want to be friendly with the athletes of course but 
I wanted to make sure right away they knew I was going to coach them hard and that I wasn't, you know, hey, Austin, we take it easy on me during this, you know, right, like, right. even though I may be your age or slightly older, you know, I'm going to coach you hard. And so that was something that Definitely. I feel like I established early. And I think once you can do that, it's, you're kind of like ageless in a sense where they're not really thinking about it as much. Right. So. And as soon as they can identify you as a coach, you're a coach, regardless right. of the age or, or what anything, right, really. So, well, um, so with Austin being here, um, he is going to be heading up our mobile unit that um, a lot of you remember from last year. Uh, we were training, we were training outdoors all the way. I, I look back in December 16th. Yeah. We had an outdoors yeah. training session. So we were in football weather, but yeah. we were able to, um, but we had, we had, we were blessed last year with some nice weather. So, um, so we are going to be getting out the mobile schedule um, in here a couple weeks, probably starting uh, next month, I think is, is kind of what I had planned for at least a limited schedule. And then we're going to try to ramp that up and get as many of the training schedules out with our mobile unit. And, and so what that mobile unit is at Crave, in the last year, we've adapted a little bit of what we do. So we have three different ways of training. We have our on-demand, which you can uh, jump online anytime as an, as an athlete, and you can uh, be anywhere. We have athletes in New York. We have athletes in Florida, uh, South Dakota. We have a bunch of different athletes, uh, different places that are training out of different gyms. Um, but then we also have some of our athletes that, that don't feel comfortable coming into the gym yet. And, um, and so we have that on demand for them. It's basically a live workout that they can pull anytime. It's a schedule of what days, uh, or what workouts and everything like that. Plus then, um, you know, you, they, those athletes can, can pull those workouts whenever they want to work out online, any location at home at another gym. So that's one, obviously we have our on location in the gym, um, training. Now that's the, the exact same as we've always had three team sessions per week um, is what we recommend. And then on top of that, doing any active rest days or, or any um, specific to goal kind of days. Um, and so if, if someone's a marathon runner, they would do our three team sessions with it, which is going to be like your strength and conditioning sessions in, in college. And then on top of that, if you're a marathon runner, you might be putting in more miles. We think of our active rest days as our practice days. And so if you have a specific goal, you can train to that specific goal on those active rest days. If you don't, and you you just want general, um, you know, athleticism or general fitness, we can um, program something else for you outside of that. So that's in the gym. And the third part of what we did last year is we invested in a trailer that has all of the exact same equipment that we have in Crave. Um, and what we do is we have outdoor training sessions open air, any court training sessions so that we can go to um, a different high school and, and train, or we can go to the soccer field and train a soccer team for strength and conditioning, or we'll have a, a park slash business parking lot uh, set up and schedule out so that we can um, basically train outdoors uh, with weather permitting, obviously, but we'll train outdoors in a park or in a, um, in a business's parking lot. And so our athletes have the option if you're local to, to bounce around and do a combination of those different um, training sessions. So that will be starting here in the next couple months. And Austin is going to be, a, is going to be the one that's kind of in charge of, um, of doing the scheduling, getting that out, coaching those team sessions, and then hopefully getting as many um, of those sessions as, as possible. Uh, so if anyone would want to work with him, one-on-one, um, -on -one. anyone would want to work with him as a team, he'll be able to, to, to do that both in e any one of the locations if you if um, that athlete wanted to or uh, at any location with the mobile trailer. So that's kind of what we got going on with Austin. He will also be coaching in uh, the gym and he's also available for one-on-one -on, uh, one -on -one performance training in the gyms as well. So he'll be kind of bouncing around and doing um, doing everything as we go. So um, that's kind of the, the, the mobile rundown of, of what we're going to be starting. And if you did it last year, um, you kind of know how that's formatted. The team sessions are the exact same on the schedule is, is what we do. And so if it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the gym, that Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be the same training at the mobile, tra uh, 
any court as well as Waukee and anywhere that you train. Uh, if you're at home or if you are in Florida, you're doing the same program um, everywhere you're at. So that eliminates excuses. You cannot say that I don't have time. You cannot say that I can't make it into the gym. You cannot say that um, you know you don't you don't even live close enough. So we have the option for everybody. Um, so if you do have any questions, reach out um, and and Austin will be available for any questions as well. But you'll probably see him as we're training. Um, he'll be uh, starting next week, I believe, right? So we'll we'll have him in shadowing and and starting coaching at both locations next week as well as. The mobile location will be up and running um, sometime next week as well. So, uh, anything else we got today? I don't think so. No. Awesome. We covered everything. Right. We're we're in it we today. Have time to spare today, even too. I Eight know. minutes to spare. I know it's kind of a short one today. Yeah. We didn't have we didn't have too many super philosophy. No, we didn't get we didn't get super deep. We didn't today, get deep today. Anything. But um, but welcome to the team, Austin. We're excited to have you. And like I said, if you have. Uh, if you're wanting to, to train with anybody, Austin will be available for um, team training as well as uh, one-on-one performance training. So, Thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. I definitely. Look forward to giving yeah, yeah. to meet all of our listeners. Awesome. Yes, definitely. And so if uh, – don't forget craveathlete.com. Jump on there. Buy that ticket for our Kinship Brewery June 12th, 9.30 a.m. training session. Uh, then we'll have drinks and uh, lunch after that. Um, if you have not already subscribed to our YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you're listening to it on um, any of your podcast uh, listening devices, whatever you platforms. Call platforms. There platforms. we go. Yeah, <laughs> whatever platform you are, give us a like and review. That helps us get the word out to more people. And as always, remember, you're an athlete. Live like it. Born an athlete, you'll die an athlete. It's in your DNA. Live like an athlete so that you can be successful. You're an athlete. Live like it. ANA. America needs athletes.